I'd like to do an example of a typical problem now where we are asked to compute a focal length, or actually we're asked to compute something about uh, the, a lens, uh, the radii of curvature, if we were given the focal length. So here might be a typical problem. This one reads, glass, uh, a glass convex lens has an index of refraction of one and a half. And we are told that one surface of the lens has twice the radius of curvature of the other. The focal length of this lens will be 60 centimeters. It's convex, so it's a positive 60 centimeters. What are the two radii? I've got to find two numbers, radius, radius number one and radius number two. Well, I don't know a whole lot, but I'm going to start with that expression that we learned about for the focal length of a lens. One over f is n minus one times one over r one minus one over r two. And I have to remember something now about a convex lens. A convex lens is one that's bulged out. If I were to draw a picture of it, it looks like that. R1 is over here. R2 is over here. This is the center of curvature number one. This is center of curvature number two. And this might be my center axis. If this is the V side and this is the R side, I have to start putting some signs on R1 and R2. So R1, I'll call it a number R, I don't know. That's going to be a positive number because the center of curvature for R1 is over on the real side. R2 is twice as big because where it says it has twice the radius of the other, but I must put in that it's a negative number. So I'm putting R2 is minus two times whatever that number R is, and that's less than zero. Now I put these two things back in my equation for the focal length. I say that one over f is n minus one, one over r, and it should be minus r two, but minus of a minus is positive, and one over two r. Now I'm going to find a common denominator for that expression there. Um, and when I do that, that becomes two over two r plus one over two r, so that's three over two r. And I have on the right-hand side of this thing, 3 times n minus 1 over 2r. Now, what's known and what's not known in this problem? I don't know r. I would like to know that. I do know the focal length. It's 60 centimeters. And I know the index refraction. It's 1 and a half. So what I have is when I move r over to the left-hand side and focal length over to the right-hand side, I have r is 3 n minus 1 times f over 2. And I'm going to scratch that out a little bit. So I have 3 times uh, 1 and a half times mi minus 1. Um, that's just a half. Divide by 2, all multiplying 60 centimeters. And this is a convex lens. We're told that um, because it's a, a positive focal length. So I put in plus 60 right here. So this is th the same as 3 fourths of 60, and that's 45 centimeters. That's what R is. So R1 is 45 centimeters. R2, to be answered correctly, I should say minus 90 centimeters because it's twice the radius, but remember it's a negative number. On the other hand, just to make you, you know, assured that uh, it didn't matter what orientation this lens is, if I had said R2 is minus 45 centimeters and R1 is plus 90, in other words, I take the lens and I flip it around, I'll still get the same focal length of 60 centimeters. So this is a somewhat unusual lens. It's, it looks something like this. It's bulbous on both sides, but it's much more bulbous on, on the one side than the other. This would be the 45 centimeter radius of curvature, and that would be the 90. And I still get the same radius of curvature whether I flip it around or not. So that's not an unusual problem to have to comp compute.